Well, hey everybody. Uh, what we're gonna to do today is the final stage in the bricking of the evaporator, and that is to put this refractory cement onto the bricks. So I uh, didn't really have any like a masonry trowel or anything. I think the putty knife will do. Um, what I'm gonna do is for as much of it as possible, it's probably just gonna be skimmed over the top and pressed into the joints. As I went through and bricked it, uh, it you know, it leans out quite a bit. So I'm not gonna to focus too much on bricking or uh, to, uh, to get it in between the bricks. Probably the few exceptions to that would be the very front. And I think that's where I'll start. Um, I want to make sure that the brick stays put in the front, especially, uh, and in the back too. Both the front and the back are, are vertical. The sides have a, have a lean. So um, have this refractory cement all mixed up as best I could. Uh, comes in a tub, um, ready to roll. I got a uniform consistency as it had set for a while. Um, the liquid had come up to the top. But we got it all mixed back together and I think we'll get started. First thing, like I said, we'll, we'll start in the front. You can see the, the bricks have some space and stuff in there. Uh, it's kind of a challenge to do the front. By far the most challenging portion of the bricking was the front. So what I'll do, pull these out, and I'm gonna try to leave them in their basic orientation as much as possible. That way, I don't think I need to label anything. Probably what I'll do, I'll start, if we can start with that one. And I'm not a professional mortar, mortarer, mortician, <laughs> Mort mortarician. We're just gonna put a little bit on there. I think we'll put a little bit on there. We just, we just put it on the, oh, I already messed up, didn't I? Should have done this one first. I don't want to put it too thick on the base at all because there's not a lot of room to give. Now I'll learn I'll do this one next. Same thing there, just put a little bit on the bottom, some on the inside edge. Probably would be easier with an actual trowel, but couldn't see buying a trowel just for this task. All right, and then this one here, the top joint. Put a little bit there, and then some in the middle. A little bit of a tight squeeze, but I think that's okay. We got a tool for that, don't we? And here we'll just clean up our glue joints. <laughs> glue joints, yeah. What happens when a woodworker does brick? It's not a glue joint at all. And honestly, this will ash off here. And we're just gonna, see here we're just pressing it into the joint. Just getting a little bit on the putty knife. And we'll just keep pressing, pressing. 
We'll do the same thing here, even though we mudded that joint. We'll press it again. This is uh, not as bad as I thought it would be. Really wasn't sure what to expect. I never, <laughs> probably can't tell, I'm just kidding. Uh, never done brickwork before. So of all the different messing around I've ever done, bricks never came up, so. With the price of this refractory cement though, I wanted to do it right the first time. I didn't want to have to have a redo. Just that little tub was, I think, $40 bill. Hopefully I can get by with one. So here, just keep going, keep going. This is what I want to see how it works. Really pressing it in here. So one thing here that I don't think I covered when I was making the video about how to how to break it or how I break it was this uh, flame wall. So in doing some internet kung fu research in this um, topic, a lot of the places, both professional and amateur, they had this flame wall. And what it's designed to do is this will be where your primary fire is, your wood, your, your, your main source here. This will force the flames to come up, and of course the pan is going to sit on this rail. And they'll have a gasket on the rail, but this is about three inches here from the top of these bricks to the bottom of the pan. So that's going to force that flame to come up and hit the bottom of the pan before it goes out the flue. So because this is just really just laid in there, um, what I'm going to do is I am going to put some mortar on these. So that should be easy to figure that one out. So then we'll just, we'll do a good coat to stick this together. And then we'll do a good coat here, but we can't be too thick because I, I don't think I left myself a ton of room. We'll do a good coat on the wall end as well. And we'll just stick it there. And hopefully that should hold it and not let it uh, weeble or wobble. So probably should have given myself a little bit more room there, but we're not going to fuss about it too much. Give yourself a little bit of room here because unless you feed your family with your maple syrup, this is just a hobby for most of us. So that'll do. Now these little pieces, these are just cutoffs that I, uh, I didn't think about adding until just now. But while I've got them, so you're bury them or throw them in the woods or use them to get your flame height just a little bit higher. So I went with getting my flame height a little bit higher. And this one here I, I was a good long scrap to chase that uh, gap. And then this, this one was actually two of the angle cutoffs I'm going to use as a pair to fill in that last little bit. So I should probably put some on the bottom. So yeah, that'll be... 
That'll be good enough for what it's for. I'm guessing. If anybody knows for sure that I should have done that differently, let me know. It would be hard to redo, but if it's bad enough that I did it that badly, um, <laughs> odds are I'll have to be doing it again sooner rather than later. But because this wall is just to, just to make the flames jump high, I think my very rudimentary mortaring is gonna be just fine. You know what we say about that? TGFN, that's good for now. And to wrap up what I'm planning on showing you anyway is this back wall. Um, this is another vertical wall. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm interested in it staying in one piece. The flames will be exiting out. Hopefully not a ton of flames because that's wasted energy. But I do want to protect these bricks a little bit. since you might have seen I used a little bit of rubble to fill that corner in. I didn't worry about getting them super, super tight, um, as many things do. These bricks will actually expand a little bit when they heat, and I wanted to give them a little bit of room for it. I, I hope I did it right. But the insulation paper is the thing that, that will do a lot of the protecting. I call it paper. It's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a interesting cross between paper and cloth. But anyway, that'll be what does a lot of the protection of the metal parts and keeps it from being overly hot. The bricks will hold the heat and, and help, I think, Probably shield a little bit of the main heat from the from the fire, but uh, mostly just want to make sure we, we get it in there good enough, and so that the brick doesn't come around and, and come off. Anyway, I think that's where I'll wrap it up. Um, any suggestions or? or Ideas for improvement here would be welcome. This is the first and time I've ever done this. And um, like a lot of things, I just kind of jump right in whether that's right or wrong. So appreciate you watching. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, question below. Other than that, hope you found it useful.